It's time once again for the real people of Malta Game Solid for Mega Tournament. Last time we did it, uh, all of our outdoor survival people, which were players from the losers bracket, people who had lost games earlier in the tournament and, and had been eliminated, uh, were lost, which means they were just trying to fumble their way out of the wilderness, and they were too successful at it, in part because of the, the added rules I put in and the um, optional rules I used from Outdoor Survival. But I have a hard time letting go of those optional rules. And so rather than tweak the lost scenario, we're going to do a completely different scenario. And it's in part bred from the four players that we have right now, which is Curly, Watermelon, Cobweb, and half pint. And the scenario we're going to do is pursuit. So how it's going to work is half pint and watermelon are both prison guards and Curly and Cobweb both escaped. Curly wants to get away because he's a nefarious master villain who wants to do all sorts of bad things to the world and Cobweb just would like to get across the desert. She wants to have that, ex that life experience before she passes on. So she's not really necessarily concerned with escape. She just wants to get across the desert and then she's met her victory condition. She can still get captured after that. That doesn't really matter to her. Although I'm gonna play her as though she still wants to get off the map edge even after that passes. So let's, let's dive in to Pursuit. So Pursuit, we have our two um, escaped convicts here. For some reason there are no guards in this location. The guards are here and here. We have Half Pint and Watermelon respectively. All right, so what they're trying to do is get off the board. Curly, especially Cobweb, wants to get across this desert here. Now it's possible that Cobweb gets across the desert and then gets captured, which would give um, the guards their victory condition. Um, as opposed to what the, I, I made some changes to what the listed scenario says. In order for both guards to be victorious, they have to capture both people. Um, unless they both end up dying and then they roll to see like kind of what the political outfall is within their workplace. Um, so Cobweb, she's just trying to get across this desert, which is easier said than done. Uh, Curly is trying to get off the map edge. Couple different changes. Instead of putting the outposts out, which is what you're supposed to do in pursuit, um, I'm just saying all these little buildings are outposts. Um, but these little buildings can also be used by our convicts if they roll a d6 under whatever their movement number is. So it's kind of their, their health. So if they're healthy, if they're A, they can always take food and water from the outposts. Um, for those of you who have been playing or following along with the outdoor survival so far, you'll be used to um, a case where they have to stop on the location in order to get the resource and where they are very constrained in their movements. Uh, the pursuit scenario is a lot kinder. For one, they can just pass through the area in order to get the resource. So if someone passed through here, they would have their water met. So you can you can pass through multiple hexes. Like if you went down this trail, you would have all your needs met because you'd have water there and food there. Um, also, the direction abilities are a bit uh, kinder to both sides, though they are different. So the pursuer has uh, worse, well, not necessarily worse. No, they have better. They have better uh, movement abilities. And then this table is about the same as the survival table, so not too much different there. Escapees go first, which means we're going counterclockwise, which means Cobweb goes first. And she rolled a six. I don't know where the die is. Oh, right there. And that demonstrates one of the most potent abilities. And the guards get this 50% of the time. They get to move at will, essentially. They, they're still limited by their movement points, but they can turn as many times as they want. And they, they can stop. They don't have to move at all. And I don't think they even have 
they can move less than their total movement value, which is very different than the other scenarios we've played, survival and loss, where you have to move the full amount no matter what because you're silly and you don't understand the wilderness. These escapees understand the wilderness. Oh, real quick while we're talking about Cobweb, reason why she has a special victory condition is her secret fantasy is to gallop across the Sahara Desert on a camel. And there we go. So she just wants to get across the desert and she can die happy, even if the rest of her life is in some jail in the middle of a wilderness. Okay, we've had our first round of turns. Both of our escapees they're not convicts, they're escapees. They're defined by their current action rather than by their place in the legal system, whatever sort of wilderness empire this is. Um, they both rolled where they could have the most influence on where they go. So that was nice for them. Um, both of our guards, and they're defined by their occupation, their current occupation, uh, they both rolled the random one where they have to move one in a random look, uh, direction and then move up, you know, as, as many as they want in another in another direction. Um, so we see watermelon coming around here. Uh, cobweb is right here, so she just has to go across here and then get out this way through one of the plains. I'm going to say the mountains don't cut it, and then. We have half pint and curly kind of squaring off. So we have curly going here. He's trying to get off the board this way. That's where he's going. And half pint, she did a random movement up there and then down there. Uh, watermelon, like the watermelon, didn't have a lot of actual food content, but was fine on water. Another round of turns, we see that um, curly has made it to this base. Since he's at a six, I don't know if I fully explained this. So. They have to roll equal to or under what their current movement rate is. Since he had a six, he was able to take the food and water he needed from this military base or penal system base there. Um, half pint, she managed to get right here. She had another random movement. Uh, looking at the desert, we see that Cobweb got down to here, but Watermelon's facing her off. So that's going to be interesting to say the least to see what happens there another round of turns watermelon rolled once again the thing where she does not get where she loses two steps from the food index which i think is funny because her name is watermelon and watermelons are mostly water there's not much caloric quantity to a watermelon uh, but she's managed to catch up somewhat to cobweb. However, she's very low on her food. Now, being low on food isn't necessarily as bad as being low on water because the jumps are slower, and, but she is going to lose another life level. So her movement rate is, is less than it should be. Uh, Half Pint made it to this base, which for those of you who, who watched the Lost video, will think that, oh, that puts her at A, but it doesn't put her at A because this is time sensitive. So she has to sit there if she wants to go to A, but it does take care of her, her needs for the turn. So she's right there. She didn't have quite the movement speed to get to here. If she was at peak physical condition, A6, she would have been able to get there and capture Curly. Watermelon's turn. If she rolls a four, five, or six, the game is over for Cobweb because she can go one, two, three, four, and capture her. And then all she has to do essentially is survive, and she gets the credit and the victory. She got a two, so that means she can go in one direction, but then she has to stop. So she's going to go one, two, three, four right there, and then roll for an event. No event. We'll go down one, down one, D. Another round of turns. Um, Cobweb, she had to go down here because she was kind of cornered in. She didn't want to keep putting in position so that if uh, she had a 50-50 chance of losing. So she's heading out of the desert. She intends to go back, though. She just has to exit from the desert from this location here. And this is kind of, say, this line. So she can come in on this line and then exit out. She's got her victory condition. Um, 
watermelon couldn't follow her into the mountains due to watermelon's movement. So, and watermelon is getting kind of hurt from hunger and whatnot. So she was heading back towards this trail where if she follows this trail, she can hit some water and some food and at least uh, delay the inevitable, which is death. It's inevitable for all of us. Uh, up here, um, Curly had to double back because Half Pint was right here. And so he followed back up the river, heading this way. Uh, Half Pint's on his trail, doing the best she can. Curly's in better shape right now because he's been on river hexes for so long. But his, he's getting hungry, and that's hard on him. Another round of turns. Cobweb is trying to replenish herself so she can finish her trek through the Sahara. This is her imagined Sahara. I don't think it's the actual Sahara Desert, um, but it's enough. You know, once you get to the point in life that she's in, going across a small desert, uh, well, it's still a, a, it takes several days to get across, right? But going across a desert of this size can feel like the Sahara. You know, it's it's better than the rest of us could hope, I think. So, so accept it. Uh, Watermelon, she got another event, and I'm not lying to you. She got another event that caused her to lose food. That just keeps happening to her. She was able to get water this turn. She was able to get food this turn. Uh, no, she wasn't able to get food. She was able to get water, but no food. And then she got an event which made her lose food. She's, that just keeps happening. So that decreased her life level, which is too bad because she's, she's starting to gain on Cobweb again, even in here. Um, she has better movement capabilities. So let's look north. Uh, Curly is heading around trying to get up this path. Unfortunately for him, Half Pint, well, he was pretty, he's been pretty fortunate, actually. He even got something that let him gain water, even though he's not even that that bad. But Half Pint's catching up to him. She rolled a six on her last turn, which gave her some movement capability and let her pass through this outpost and pick up some supplies. Curly's blessings keep coming unto him. He got a, he rolled a six again, which gave him a lot of maneuverability. Though once he got to the trail, the trail kind of did the work for him because you can just follow the trail and not have to worry about in direction rolls or anything like that, at least in how I play. So he's got a head start on half pint. She's really just got to hope that um, her direction ability is better than his and that's going to help her catch up. Uh, there, and he's got a stronger movement than she does right now. So he's pretty much scot-free, it seems. Um, watermelon, she had to go back this way, which makes a lot of sense because she got some water and some food out of it. She got a good roll as well, which gave her some maneuverability, but she's going to be able to all set to kind of cut off, um, cut off cobweb if cobweb comes back. Cobweb's sitting on this pond here. She might just stay there because she's getting really low on water and she'll definitely die if she doesn't get her water index up before she attempts to recross the Sahara of her. Another round of turns in the north, uh, Curly got a randomized roll or a randomized direction, so he had to go in the mountains and then come back to the trail in order to head his way out. A lot's going to depend on his next roll because half that gave Half Pint time to catch up. If he gets another randomized roll, he's not going to be able to make it, likely. Though it's still possible, I guess, depending on what half pint rolls. But if he does get a roll where he can just decide his direction, he's scot free. And that's going to leave half pint in, in quite a difficult position. Uh, going down to the south, both of watermelon and cobweb are just sitting on these ponds here, just drinking in water because neither of them can brave the desert without uh, proper hydration. And it's time for Curly's big roll. Let's see, you got two, that's random. So we'll see which way it goes. Five. Oh, Curly, wrong way. So he goes one, two, three, and he's gonna just go four, five, get out of there. He has his food requirement, but not his water, so he's gonna drop down another index to still at five, so he's kind of in a similar position. That's going to depend on what half pint rolls. And we'll go out of turn order, let half pint go first, just to kind of resolve this issue on camera before watermelon. Well, watermelon is just going to do, we can just go ahead and do her. And no event for her. All right, half pint rolls. She gets a four, five, or six. I think she can catch him. She got a one, which is not good. 
She's going to have the random roll too. She still could do it if she rolls a six on this or a one. A five. Five is not what she wants. So she goes one, two, three, four, five. And there's where it sits. We're kind of in a similar situation next round. Curly got yet another random direction roll. He got a five this time. Again, that's going to put him down here. That's one, two, three, four, five. He made it off the map. Curly is going on to careers. We'll set him over here. And we'll draw another person, I think. Um, and they can do something else. But let's, let's do that now. Let's do that now, and I'll spend some time thinking about what that other person can do. Oh, it's Demi. Okay, so Demi... I'll have to go off camera and think about what sort of scenario Demi is going to be facing. He could be a convict, or probably more likely it'll be something else. But it, it's kind of it'd be fun if he was a convict. I'll have to look at his card. Since I can't really see Demi being an escapee or a convict, um, I'm going to have him play the lost scenario at uh, concurrent with the with the current concurrent with the current scenario of the pursuit with the escapees and the guards. Another round of turns. Cobweb lost some water due to an event. Demi, he's stuck here due to an event for a turn uh, headed up towards this base here. Watermelon, I think she lost a life level. Or maybe she lost water or food or something. Seems like lots of bad events have been happening. And Half Pint made it to here. She's gotta get down and try and help capture uh, cobweb, or the game's over for her. Another round of turns. Cobweb, she's hanging out here still. Um, half pint, she was forced to stick here due to an event. Didn't work out so bad for her because she got another event which allowed her to increase her water index, but she still is racing against the clock. She wants to get the capture on, um, on cobweb before watermelon does. Watermelon, knowing that, headed off, ended up in these woods because she had to go in a straight line. And, but she's hoping to get to watermelon before watermelon takes off or dies or something else happens. Demi, he's heading up here, trying to get to this trail. He's almost there. Once he gets there, it's pretty much a straight shot to the end, although he does have to deal with this lost direction ability. Once again, Watermelon got the event which made her lose food. I wish I, w I would roll these all out before the camera so you would believe me, but that would make for a very long video. It's kind of a lot of dice rolling, die rolling. I, I said dice, I learned that from, what game was that that always says dice when it means die? Anyway, there's lots of die rolling and I can't record it all, so you just have to trust me. If you don't by now, then you're, you're probably not going to unless you get to know me and then I don't know if that will help. So anyway, Watermelon's getting very close. She has just enough movement points to get into this hill. Cobweb was sitting still but she's gonna have to move now. She can't She can't keep staying there. Um, but she did hit roll that she has to stay there one turn so a lot's gonna depend on Watermelon's roll. If Watermelon gets a roll which causes her to go somewhere else Cobweb's okay, otherwise she's in trouble. Um, but Cobweb can move now. Let's see, what else is going on? Um, Demi is getting closer. She's done with her time spent in the river. She's going to be able to move next turn, half pint, but I, I fear she's going to be too slow unless Cobweb gets away. We'll see. Cobweb got a six. That's very good for her. That means she can just kind of move at will which she doesn't have a lot of options. She's gonna to have to just move directly away from watermelon there. So she'll go there, lose a food level. Oh no, she had to stay there. I forgot, she can't do that. So that's gonna go away. She'll roll, she doesn't get an event. And so let's do watermelon since we're talking about it. Then we'll go back to Demi. Three. That's going to let her move and capture, and that's going to be the end of the pursuit phase.
And we'll just stick Demi in the next episode of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. So what happened is Watermelon goes on. Half pint. Should we give her a 50-50 chance? Let's give her a 50-50 chance. Cobwebs, obviously back in jail. She didn't get to cross the desert as she wished. Demi's still going. So one, two, or three. And half pint is out of the tournament. Four, five, or six, and she'll stay on. Goodbye, half pint. Way to go, watermelon. Half pint's such a good competitor. It's sad to see her go. Real quick before we end, I'll go ahead and draw the next three people who are going to be in outdoor survival so I can contemplate what sort of scenario they'll, they'll take part in. Um, Demi's lost. He's still in it. So we're not starting totally fresh, but we will draw three new people. And the first one is... Kevin O, dude, bro, sedosif. And then the second one is, oh, Tater, as in Tot. And the third one is, Oblio. All right, so I'll take a look at their, their deets on the back of their cards and see if I can come up with a scenario that fits with all of them. If not, we might just do something kind of generic like what Demi is going through right now. Next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire and Mega Tournament, English slash Pasha Roo, leg one, outdoor survival.